the rest. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I want to talk a little bit about superhero outfits, specifically the style and what would be more practical for them to wear. And as I've been thinking about this, I've come to some interesting conclusions that I want to share with you. First and foremost, I need to preface this discussion in the understanding that we're dealing with superheroes of particularly significant superpowers. So we're talking about high invulnerability and high strength. So those two powers are some of the most prominent powers amongst all superheroes, but granted, not every one of them. Batman doesn't have super strength or super invulnerability, and so it makes sense then that his outfit should be something quite durable. In reality, it actually should be armor, which in most modern instances of Batman, it is. And that is absolutely logical, practical, functional, makes sense totally. I completely agree. And so a superhero in the same vein as Batman, who does not actually possess super durability, regardless if they're male or female, it makes a massive amount of sense that their outfit be a type of armor, or in actual fact, their outfit add certain abilities and powers on top of it, like Iron Man. So now let's look at superheroes, who have at least superhuman strength and exceptionally high durability, if not a certain level of invulnerability. These are, as I mentioned, some of the most common superpowers that we see amongst superheroes, but even superpowered individuals usually. What is really interesting then, when we consider the types of outfits and clothing that they would want to wear when being superheroes, so we're not talking about just the clothing they wear on their everyday life, we're talking about the clothing they wear when they're using their powers specifically and this is usually in some type of conflict or combat. What's really interesting is this. It is that their clothing would usually, in most instances, if they are dealing with making clothing from the materials you have available with just regular technology, their clothing or outfit would be nowhere near as durable as the individual superhero themselves who possess this invulnerability or super strength. Think about that. That actually has some significant implications because... It it would run into some certain problems. Now, of course, I will say that most of the time in uh, superheroes, whatever, they just ignore this, okay? I'm looking at this from a more realistic perspective because when you look at the superhero genre, usually their <laughs> clothing somehow magically is as durable as they are. Even the Superman suit that was made by his parents in earlier iterations of Superman suddenly becomes as invulnerable as him and bullets are bouncing off the outfit just because it can bounce off Superman. Now, of course, this has been changed in more modern iterations of Superman, where he gets his outfit from a Kryptonian source, and the outfit actually is as vulnerable as Superman, and that is kind of the ideal outfit you would want to try and get. An outfit that is as invulnerable and is as durable as the superhuman themselves. That's the ideal. That's what they would want, but not every superhero would be able to get that, especially if they are limited to more realistic technology and materials that are available. And if you are limited to that more realistic reality, what type of outfit would be best for them to wear. Well, as I've thought about this, my conclusion, interestingly, marries into what a lot of these stereotypical superhero outfits are already depicted as, though I don't think these outfits were chosen because of this vein of logic that I have now followed through. I think they've mainly picked it because it looks good and they want something flashy and that presents itself really well. But oddly enough, I think a lot of superhero outfits are justified through this logical process that I'm now going to share with you because my conclusion is the most practical outfits for someone who has superhuman strength and durability to wear would either be skin tight clothing so an outfit that hugs the skin as close as possible or skimpy clothing as little as possible so it has less chance of getting damaged and then ripped off. All right, hear me out here. The problem that the superhero would face would be that their clothing would get torn to shreds because it'd be very unlikely that this clothing would ever be as durable as they are if you're dealing with modern materials. Even modern day ballistic material, like ballistic vests, get damaged quite considerably even though they are capable of blocking certain ballistic rounds, okay? So they can only survive this
this level of impact for a certain length of time. And when we consider the amount of power that these super-powered individuals can put behind their punches, well, they'd be able to damage this ballistic clothing to a far greater degree than a regular bullet. So once again, you're running into that problem is that the clothing is going to get ripped to shreds. And so what are your options then? If you want to have your clothing remain in as intact a state as possible, the ultimate conclusion would be to wear less clothing. You don't want to go around naked, so you'd want to cover the areas, but that's kind of the limit because any other area you cover has a higher chance of then being shot. Because look at a person, if you see a superhero and you shoot at them, the less clothing they wear, the less chances the bullet will land on the clothing and then just hit the invulnerable skin. And so I think then it would be kind of a balance as to how much skin this superhuman individual would feel comfortable in exposing and how much of their clothing they'd be willing to risk getting torn to shreds either by bullets or, well, when we actually get into the fighting between super-powered individuals, particularly people with superhuman strength, well then, there are punches that certain superhuman individuals are able to produce that would almost atomize regular clothing. Just one solid, insanely super-powered punch in the gut would just explode the clothing around this superhuman individual. That's a bit of a problem, wouldn't it be? But then there is also the matter of grappling, okay? Because when super-powered individuals individuals are fighting, oftentimes they're going to be grabbing each other, leveraging, punching, or whatever. And so again, the greater amount of clothing you're wearing, the greater chances the clothing is going to be grabbed by your opponent and torn off. But this is where skin-tight clothing isn't actually nearly as bad as a lot of other types of outfits the superhero could be wearing. So imagine a super-strength individual grabbing another super-strength individual by the arm, squeezing and then pulling, okay? If the superhero getting grabbed is wearing clothing that is more loose, there is a higher chance that the other superhero when grabbing is just going to grab a bunch of material when they pull, they're going to be pulling that material and it'll just rip off completely. But if that material is skin tight and the other superhero grabs them say on the arm, when they squeeze there's a much higher chance that they're going to be grabbing the muscle and flesh of the opponent with the material and when they pull they'd be pulling the arm and not the material and there'd be less chance of the clothing getting ripped and torn off in the process. The other side to this that makes skin tight clothing more practical for a super superhero is if it is somewhat resistant to ballistics. And of course, looking at how invulnerable superheroes can get, there's no real world material really in existence that can match that level of invulnerability. But there is bullet resistant material that, okay, say it might not be able to block a material, but what if that's not the purpose? What if the purpose of this material is just to stay intact? And if it is put on a really hard surface, say an invulnerable surface, there is a much higher chance of it remaining intact, relying on the strength of the surface behind it, than the core strength in the material itself. And in this instance, it just needs to kind of survive it, then actually resist it, because it's relying on the resistance of the invulnerable superhuman that the material is on. But what this means then, is that any type of material like this that is loose, that doesn't have the support of the invulnerable superhuman behind it, wouldn't do the job, because it wouldn't be able to stop the bullet. That's not what it's made for. And so if a bullet then catches on a loose bit of material that isn't backed up by the superhuman skin underneath, it would get torn and ripped off. And so even if you get material that is resistant to damage and as resistant as you can try and manage to get against ballistics, it would still have a much higher chance of staying intact, being skin tight, resting on the surface of the superhero than if it was loose and flapping around. And so then we come back to that stereotypical depiction of the superhero wearing skin tight clothing. It actually makes makes sense in this sense. If they fall into this fairly common category of their body being vastly more durable than the clothing that they're wearing, and if they're subjected to impacts that would greatly damage their clothing. And we have these two extremes where the clothing they would pick that has less chances of being torn and ripped off would either be skin tight or less of it. And then in extension to that, it makes sense to combine both those philosophies, perhaps not on the limbs or legs even, and the clothing that they are wearing is skin tight, so it has a higher chance of remaining intact, but then it would also need to be made out of very durable and resistant material, as durable as you could find in the modern day, because if it's just made out of regular cloth, well, then it goes back to that initial philosophy that it has really high chances of being torn and ripped up. And so in regards to everything that we've been talking about, there is a bit of an elephant in the room, and that is the matter of capes. Yes, unfortunately, capes do not make sense 
with superheroes unless there is a functional utility behind them. Like Batman that they tried to do in the Christopher Nolan. Batman thinks that it can turn into a type of glider. So if there is a logical, functional reason for the cape to be there that you can justify, of course. But if the only reason for the cape is the looks, aesthetics, well, it has far more problems than, in actual fact, it really has no benefits. It's getting it torn up. It's a place that the opponent can grab, swing around. And as we saw in The Incredibles, you know, there are other problems that can exist with capes. But even with all the potential problems, one of the biggest things about the capes is that they'll just get ripped up and torn to shreds. And so what's the point in even having one if the chances are it's just going to get ripped off in no time? So unfortunately, capes don't really fit well with the superior unless you can justify it. No capes! And so there we go. And you know, this is a conclusion I never expected to come to when I started to think about, gee, what would a superior really need to wear? This was not me trying to justify skin tight clothing or skimpy outfits in any measure. I'm a far more conservative leaning individual and I believe in modest dress with practicality in mind. So I don't think it's immodest for an Olympic level athlete to be exposing a lot of skin when they're undertaking a lot of physical exertion. But like I said, I wasn't trying to justify it in any measure. I just was starting to think about it and I surprised myself in the conclusion that I naturally came to. Also, I don't think this logic justifies superhero outfits that are basically just lingerie. Because honestly, there have been a lot of superhero outfits out there that were pretty darn shameful. If it makes sense for the character and backstory, fine. But if not, let's try and be a little bit consistent and more realistic, shall we? A perfect example of a scantily clad superhero in which this makes complete logical sense is, of course, the Hulk. And I get that because it makes logical sense. His clothing gets torn up when he grows in strength. And that's the exact point I'm making here. That sometimes certain outfits are actually far more logically justified either in the story or in the practical function. And it's interesting that when superheroes are fighting, they are undertaking a lot of physical exertion. And uh, what do athletes usually wear when they are competing? Oftentimes it's beneficial for them to have their skin exposed to help them cool down. And so if a superhumanly durable superhero Hero chooses to follow the logic of wearing less clothes for the logic I've described here, I would more envision it being a more athletic type of outfit. Something that is more practical and also helps them cool down when undergoing high physical exertion. So what do you think? Do you think this is right? Do you think this logic makes sense? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And on top of that, YouTube judges the likelihood that people enjoy videos based on interaction, which is views, so thank you very much for watching this video, but also likes and comments. And the more interaction that this video gets, the higher chances that it'll get promoted in the algorithm and other people will get to see it. So please like this video and drop a comment down in the comment section. And if you can't think of a comment to share, just write a Hulk in the comment section because he is actually one of the more scantily clad superheroes in superhero lore. And he is also one of the few superheroes that follows this logic somewhat in that his clothes get torn off when he grows. But of course there is that other elf in the room that in reality when the Hulk truly grows into his form, all his clothes would be ripped off. That's in my brain now. Or unless he was able to find some really stretchy trousers. So drop a Hulk in the comment section below if you can't think of anything to say. It'll help out this video tremendously. Thank you for watching. I do hope you have enjoyed. And of course, I hope to see you on the next video here on Shediversity. So until that time, farewell.